no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. world the headlines read of those whose hearts are filled with greed and rob and steal from those who need to right this wrong with blinding speed goes underdog 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 speed of writing more of thunder fighting all who rob or blunder standing guard over one of the world's most valuable paintings. Well, it's time we were closing for the night, underdog. Sure hope that gang of thieves don't come back. This painting will be safe at home with me. Tomorrow, I'll return it for visitors to see. And as soon as the museum was closed for the night, Riff Raff and his band of thieves sneaked in. Okay, gang, let's set up our next step in guerrilla warfare. Camouflage and sabotage. All night long, strange sounds came from the museum. But the following day, everything seemed to be perfectly normal. Until... Help! Underdog! An explosion blew open the vault! There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Hurry, Underdog. I'll stand watch over the painting. But the moment Underdog left the painting, two columns, a statue, and a wastebasket began moving slowly toward the painting. The explosion made a twisted mess out of the door. To get this back the way you seek, I'll want my strength at its very peak. Uh, what's with the ring? The secret compartment of my ring I fill with an underdog super energy pill. Great, underdog! The job is perfect! race to answer this next call, the two columns, the statue, and the wastebasket moved closer to the famous painting. There seemed to be holes in every single pipe! But Underdog knew what he must do, and quickly he broke off a piece of the pipe and joined the ends together again. Now a little gun to chew is just a thing I need to do. How can you stop to chew gum at a time? I'm not chewing gum for a refreshing pause. I need this gum to serve our cause. Oh, underdog, you're wonderful. The heating system, something's wrong. The heat is pouring out. We all suffocate. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. And as Underdog hurried to fix the heating system, two columns, a statue, and a wastebasket moved in on the painting. Oh! They stole the painting! When Polly screams, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go! <laughs> okay, gang. Let's get out of this stuff. We sure put it over. This camouflage is great. It's as great for me as it is for you. Now give me the painting before I count two. Run for it, gang! I'd catch that gang and take them to jail, but I must return the painting without fail. Well, camouflage failed, boss. What now? The only step left in guerrilla warfare. Sneak attack. It never fails. And how do you sneak up on Underdog? At night. Every night, he takes the painting home. So all we have to do is figure a way to follow him. Wait till he's asleep and snatch the painting. Follow Underdog home? 
Does this mean that Riff Raff may find out about Underdog's secret identity? The answer lies ahead in our next exciting episode. Isn't it a lovely wallpaper pattern, Flunky? I'm doing the entire office over with this expensive paper. Yeah, it sure is nice wallpaper, all right. This, of course, is just a sample. But all the rolls of paper will be delivered later today. I want you to be certain that nothing happens to them. Oh, yeah, sure thing, Mr. Livingston. Understand you wanted to see me, Stanley. I think I can guess now what it was. I suppose you want me to wallpaper your office. Heaven forbid I do not. I simply want you to pass the news along that the mayor is paying us a visit next week. That is why I'm having my office redecorated. So? So I want everyone in the zoo to prepare for the mayor's visit just as I'm doing. I want everything cleaned up, spotless, perfect. Now run along and spread the news. Gee, Tennessee, where you headed? Come on, Chumley, I've got to spread some important news around the zoo. Stanley Livingston told me... I told you what, Tennessee? You said... Get me out of here! Get me out of here! You, the Gopher Brothers, get those holes filled up. The mayor's coming next week and Stanley wants everything perfect. Ridiculous the way I have to run around spreading the news. It's dangerous. Just look over there. The Beaver Brothers cutting down another tree. You know, it looks like it's going to fall, can Of see? course it's going to fall. And it could fall right on me. Right on, right on. Timber, timber, timber. Chumley, you are supposed to yell timber before the tree falls. You, the Beaver Brothers, get those trees cleared out of here. The news is that the mayor's coming next week. Now get this place cleaned up. Finally, after more dangerous encounters, Tennessee had passed on the news to everyone in the zoo. Chumley, I, I, I can't go on spreading the news like this. Go get Yak and Baldy. I've got a plan. Men, we are behind the times. It is ridiculous for me to be running around the zoo to spread the news. We are going to do it the modern way. I get you, Tennessee. We'll broadcast the news. We'll give them the old Hinkley Winkley report. What's, What's new, new from, from the zoo? zoo? What's, What's new from, from the zoo? zoo? We get the news from the news of the zoo's who's who's. What's Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What's well, what kind of a day has it been? It's been a day like all days. A day when the activity of the zoo... Hold it! Hold it! We are not going to broadcast the news. We are going to print it. We are starting our own newspaper. Yay! Yay! Hey, Jiminy, Tennessee, I've got just the name for our paper. We'll call it the Yakety Yak. Personally, I prefer the Morning Eagle. Hey, Tennessee, how about calling it the... No, Chumley, we will not call it the Walrus Street Journal. We must keep personalities out of this. We'll call our newspaper the Tennessee Tablet. Realizing that there was a great deal he did not know about the newspaper business, Tennessee decided that a visit to Mr. Whoopi was necessary. Chumley, we've got to get out of here. I think this calls for escape plan 302. Chumley, you simply toss this lasso over the fence post, then you and I can climb over. Okay, Tennessee. (laughs) Stop pulling. I said the fence. The fence post, not my neck. You got it. Quick now, start climbing. Well, Chumley, at least we're out. Let's get over to Mr. Whoopies. Well, now, this is news. Oh, yes, starting your own newspaper. Oh, yes, indeed. Well, we'll certainly need our fabulous, fantastic three-dimensional blackboard. Ah, here we are, the 3DBB. Now, let me see. (laughs) Newspapers. Well, the business of spreading news is certainly different from what it was in ancient times. Then, news was spread from place to place, mostly by travelers moving from one city to the next. Of course, if news was very important, special messengers might be sent with it. 
Make way for the messenger of the king! Those guys were really in a hurry. Oh, yes, indeed. Well, early newspapers were published by a printer as a part of his regular business. Each printer edited his own paper, deciding what news he should print and how it should be told. But it's not like that today, eh, Mr. Whoopi? Oh, no. Let's just consider how a newspaper gets a story today. This is it, Chumley. Don't miss a word. Well, just suppose there's a big fire somewhere in the city. The newspaper sends a reporter to the fire right away to get the story on the spot. Now, often, this reporter doesn't even take time to go back to his office. To get the news in as fast as possible, he telephones his story into what they call a rewrite man. The man who takes down the reporter's facts and writes the story the way you read it. Sowie. Then what? Well, next, the story is given to a liner type operator. He's the fellow who sets the story in type so that thousands of copies of it can be made. Okay, it's set in type. What now? Then come the big presses. This story of the fire, along with many, many other stories, is put on the giant presses and they start to roll. They not only print the hundreds or thousands or even millions of copies needed, but many of them cut and fold the newspapers as well. Finally, a conveyor belt takes the papers down to the delivery room where trucks pick them up and deliver them to all parts of the city so that you can buy them at a stand or have them delivered by a newsboy. Big Mr. Whoopi, huge, exciting, terrific. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, indeed. But no good for us. No? But why, my boy? Money, Mr. Whoopi. Think what it would cost us to pay for the printing process. Oh, but for the zoo, you only need a small newspaper and not many copies, so you can use a small printing set. And I just happen to have one here. Now all you need is the paper. <laughs> Thanks a million. Phineas J. Whoopi, you're the greatest. Back at the zoo, Tennessee quickly sprang into action. All right, ma'am. Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. I'll be the reporter and write up the stories. Yak can set up type on our printing set. And Baldy can deliver the papers around the zoo. Uh, what about me, Tennessee? You can take care of getting the paper we need. A lot of it, Chumley, rolls and rolls. Okay, Tennessee, rolls and rolls of paper. Nobody in the office, Fred. The door's locked. What are we going to do with all this wallpaper? Just put it down over there by the door. Somebody will be along in a while. Hey, I wonder what's in there. Oh, boy, paper rolls and rolls. Oh, boy, where do I see Tennessee? Tennessee, I got the paper. I got the paper. Let me show you. I got rolls and rolls. Watch ro it to Yuck. He's setting type on our first edition as fast as I can write it. Uh, okay, Tennessee. And later, Tennessee's newspaper was an immediate success with everyone in the zoo. Or oh, that is almost everyone. Well, Stanley, I thought you'd be around. I suppose you've come to congratulate us on the newspaper. No, Tennessee. I came to bring you a big story for your paper. A big story? Good. We'll put out an extra. What is it? It's a story about what happened to a penguin and a walrus. You, you scoundrels, printed your news on the back of my wallpaper. My beautiful, expensive wallpaper. Oh. Your wallpaper? Yes, and now I'm going to make you pay. We'd better turn to the sports section, shall we? Run like mad. When we left King Leonardo, Biggie Rat and Itchy Brother had put their throne-stealing plot into action. Odie Coloni, faithful servant of the king, was tied up in Biggie's apartment, the noose drawing tighter and tighter around his neck. King Leonardo himself was feverishly trying to escape the palace guards. Turning to look back, the king saw Biggie Rat in the palace window, painting himself to look like Odie Coloni. But there was little time to think what this meant. Leaping the palace wall, the king looked desperately for a place to hide. Luckily, there happened to be a suitable hole nearby. I say, Governor, you're lying on my lunch. A jelly sandwich it was, too. Not much now. They can't do this to me. I'm the king of all the Bongo Congo. I'll show those traitors that... Wanted dead or alive. Thief, assassin, and impersonator of king. 10,000 Bongo skins reward. Oh, no. All is lost. No hope. No hope at all. 
And where in this time of need is my trusted true blue servant? Where is... It can't be. It can't. But it is. Sure enough, the king had picked up the trace of his loyal servant. In fact, Odie Colony at that moment was right under or over the king's nose. The loyal servant had freed the first of his bonds. He was moving toward freedom. <laughs> No door will keep the king from his true blue servant. Here I... Is it... Is it truly you, sire? Is it my king dressed in rag? Of course it's me, confound it! Pull my head out of this wall! Where were you, true blue Odie? Gone when I needed you. I overheard the plot of those two traitors, your majesty. But they caught me and tied me hand and foot. Did they... did they... Yes, they have the throne. Then you shall return to claim it. I'm a hunted man. They even have a reward out for me. And that foul Biggie Rat has painted himself to look like you. No one will suspect them now. But you shall find a way. Permit me to help your majesty reach the palace in secret. <laughs> Put your hands here, sire. Together we shall dash forward, vault, and land on the palace roof. We can enter the throne room from there. It's hopeless. Hopeless, I tell you. I've lost my throne forever. No, sire. Your brave and unrelenting spirit has given us an idea. I'm certain it will work. Today is the dedication of the one billionth bongo drum made in your drum factory. Itchy brother, acting in your place, will have to be there for the dedication. And Biggie Rat, disguised as myself, must be with him. So Biggie and Itchy will be there. And then... I understand, sire. Oh, your idea is indeed unusual. We must be quick to prepare ourselves. <laughs> It's not the king at all! Look at that stringy mane! It's Itchy Brother! And that's Biggie Rat with him! But where is the king? Here is your king! And there must be just punishment for these two! And there must be just punishment for these two! Wonderful, Your Majesty! Well said! Once more, King Leonardo and True Blue Odie Colony have proven that crime does not pay. But have Biggie and Itchy learned their lesson? We'll find out in our next exciting episode with the King and Odie. Oh, oh, oh. Riff had figured out that all the gang had to do was to follow Underdog home and steal the painting while he was asleep. But yeah, but now how are we going to follow him? He flies through the air. I got a plan. Observe this bag. It's full of bird seed. There is a small hole in it. If we hang the bag on Underdog, the bird seed keeps coming out the hole and Underdog leaves a trail wherever he goes. Mastermind. A, a genius. He's a mastermind. He's a genius. That night, when it was closing time at the museum, Underdog took the painting from the wall. Good night, Underdog. Don't let anyone steal that painting. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. <laughs> Underdog suspect that everywhere he went, he left a clear trail of bird seed. Okay, gang. There's the trail. Let's follow it. 
is a sneak attack. Shoeshine. That means Shoeshine is really underdog in disguise. Wow. Come on. What is the meaning of this riffraff? I'm just humble, lovable shoeshine. Like fun! We're taking that painting! And you're not going to do a thing about it because we're wise to your secret! What secret is that, sir? We know you're underdog! We followed your trail from the museum. Is there nothing underdog can do? Will Riff tell the world his secret? No. Underdog decided to use his lightning speed to fool Riff. Underdog is just a friend of mine. He's over there. Where? Here. Where's Shoeshine? Here. I'm here. I'm here. 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 Grab the pictures and beat it! I've kept my secret, that is true, but now I must catch the criminals, too. Again, the famous painting was safe, and people looked up in the air and said, Hey, look in the sky, there's a plane. It's a bird. It's a frog. A frog? Not plane, nor bird, nor even frog. It's just little old me on... <laughs> Underdog. Underdog. <laughs>